Hi there, Izzy from DigitalGoja.com showrooms again. Well, today we're going to touch on a topic that I've seen a lot of discussion. I've seen a lot of customer service questions and emails, questions posted on the internet about vignetting. What is vignetting? Vignetting is when you are getting an image cropped, especially around the edges. How does this occur? Well, a lot of times it has to do with what we are placing in front of our lens. For example, some of us get these wide angle fisheye adapters that thread on and you might get vignetting when you're working at a really wide perspective on your original lens. Then also vignetting occurs sometimes with filters where we put filters that are a little bit too thick for the perspective lens that we're working with or we add filter on top of filter on top of filter and then also sometimes lens hoods. Sometimes we work with lens hoods that have the tulip design and then all of a sudden if you don't turn the design of the tulip in a proper direction you're going to notice vignetting also. So let's take a closer look at this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to place different filters and adapters on the actual recording lens so you can see where the vignetting occurs as it's recording me. Let's take a closer look. Let's first try with one of these very popular tulip design lens hoods. These guys are meant to thread on, they're meant to protect your lens, plus also get rid of any excess lighting flare. Now I'm going to put this on my 18 to 55 STM lens that I'm working with right now on my camera to record. Let's put this on and show you what happens when vignetting occurs. Now, notice how you're getting these marks around the corners. That's called vignetting. Right now the lens is set to 18 millimeter and I have the tulip lens hood at a particular angle. So I'm going to slightly turn it. More vignetting, more vignetting. Voila, no more vignetting. All you have to do is turn it at the correct angle and it eliminates the vignetting. Now, of course, if you have it set to this and you come to a conclusion that you zoom in more, of course, the more you magnify and zoom in, the less vignetting you're going to have occur. But if you want to shoot at your widest perspective, just slightly turn the lens hood and there you go. Vignetting eliminated. Now let's take a look at this with some of those adapters that are on the market. All right, so now we have a standard rubber lens hood. This is the three setting design where you have three different modes where it extends to. So these guys are popular because they're pretty economical and they give you again the capability of getting rid of any type of lens flare plus it does add an added protection benefit to have this in front of your optic in case you happen to bump it the rubber is going to try to stop any kind of damage occurring to your lens. So let's put this guy on and see how this could cause vignetting. All right, so now this is our lens hood ex fully extended to the third setting. Honestly, the manufacturer didn't take into consideration that we have a lot of wide angle zooms on the market now. So notice how you're getting all this vignetting around the edge. Now, the way to combat that is move it to the second position. And now, there you go, no more vignetting. Now, of course, if you still want the lens fully extended, you have to zoom in more and not work at the widest perspective which again on this lens happens to be 18 millimeter. So as soon as I zoom in to about 22, 24 millimeter, no more vignetting. But honestly a lot of us like to work with the wider perspective and why go through the hassle of losing that? So all you have to do is move it to the second setting and there you go. You now still have the capability of working with your rubber lens hood but you've eliminated any kind of vignetting. Now here I have a very popular adapter that is out on the market. This is the Altura Photo 0.43x super wide angle adapter lens. This guy threads onto your existing lens and gives you a wider perspective. But 
you have to be careful about vignetting because you're adding much thicker product in front of your existing lens. So let's attach this again to the 18 to 55 IS STM and see what occurs. Well, here we have it. There is the 0.43x attached to your 18 to 55. Notice how you're picking up way more perspective than what we had before, but look at these edges, that's vignetting. So what do we do? The, there's, I mean, even if you turn this, you're not gonna be able to remove that because that's the perspective we're getting. So what do we do? We have to zoom in. So now you're still getting a really wide perspective. Look, I'm, I'm almost in the picture. And this is still working with the 18 to 55, but that 0.43x conversion factor gives us a much wider view. And again, you're still getting a pretty wide view without having the vignetting around the edges when you zoom all the way out to 18. Right here, I'm probably shooting closer to 20, 21 millimeter. So I'm still being able to get a nice clear perspective, no vignetting. Now, let's take filter use into consideration. Right now on my lens, I have a standard UV filter. I'm just, that's the way I've always done it. I like to protect my optics, so I always have a UV on there. It doesn't affect anything. Don't worry about the ultraviolet rays, that's pretty much disappeared in the days of digital, but it's pretty much an insurance policy to make sure that I don't scratch the front element, or if I bang it or drop it, let the filter take the damage. But I like special effect filters. I'm old school. I still prefer doing it with a filter as opposed to doing it post-production. So I use CPL filters to give myself some better contrast and also get rid of some excess reflection. And here in sunny Florida, sometimes we have really bright washed out days where I don't get the blues that I prefer. Guess what? I like to use a graduated blue filter to add that little extra push of blue color to my skylight. So, let's see what happens when we place these filters on top of our existing UV. Ooh, how'd it get so dark in here? Well, I've placed a CPL filter on here. Remember, this cuts down your light by about two stops. So notice, there is no vignetting. It, of course, did its job. It's much darker and giving better contrast, but no vignetting whatsoever. Now, let's add the graduated blue filter. Now, with the graduated blue filter, yeah, there's a blue tint, but notice the edges. There's your vignetting. It's gonna occur. Now, of course, the way to eliminate it if you want to keep stacking filters is you have to zoom in a little bit more to get rid of that perspective. But if you wanna shoot at your full 80 millimeter wide perspective, you're gonna have to remove some filters. So honestly, in this case, since you're working with a CPL and a graduated blue, I would maintain those and remove the UV temporarily so that I can still work with both of these filters. Or if you've come to a conclusion that you don't need the CPL, once you remove that and put the graduated blue, again, no more vignetting. You be the judge, but you can't stack filter on top of filter because this is what's going to occur. So, I hope I was able to clear up any questions or concerns that we were having about what vignetting is and how to get rid of it. If this video was helpful to you, please hit me up with a like button underneath. And remember, subscribe to our channel for future tutorials and sessions such as this. And as always, put your comments and questions underneath so that we can get to them. Happy shooting!